Next talk, hope everyone's awake after the dragons. Another talk about machine learning, this time machine learning at bold.com right now. Please, a round of applause for Daniel. Hello, welcome. In this talk, I will tell you uh, something about growing up Billy using data and machine learning. Um, first, in this talk, I will give a short introduction uh, of what we are doing and to introduce a data-driven uh, framework for development. Then I will explain uh, our current automated uh, chat dialogue system, Billy, that we are improving using AI and machine learning. Uh, finally, I will tell something about what we can do with machine learning for the future of customer service. Okay, first some small uh, personal background. I first learned programming on a TI-83 uh, uh, calculator, uh, where I made some small uh, applications and games. It was uh, more than 10 years ago I started uh, programming this way. We also, uh, in 2008, we made a kind of a chatbot using uh, pattern uh, matching. Uh, it was part of uh, a work in a secondary school called Kunstmatige Intelligentie als Toepassing op de Communicatie tussen Mens en Computer. AI for the communication between human and computer. We explained a bit about natural language processing, machine learning, neural networks and build a small dialect system based on pattern matching. Later, I also did some work on data analysis, computer vision, and published a few uh, machine learning models for programming tools. Uh, currently, I work at Bold.com uh, on a mix of data and machine learning projects. I also keep a newsletter uh, where I publish some of the latest advances in AI research. Um, Yes, this one. Uh, our goal of our team, uh, 42DT, is to improve the service we give to our customers. This, we can do this in a few ways. Uh, one is by improving proce processes, and we can do it by, uh, by enabling better decision making. We can make, take better actions to help the customer and our employees. Uh, furthermore, we can give our employees and sellers access to the latest insights based on the data we have. Uh, for development, we use a data-driven approach. I will tell you something about this. In all developments, we start first with the data we already have. Um, we can already build some predictions and insights based on this data, which we translate then into actions and decisions. What is important about this is that integrating this system also could improve the data and future predictions we have based on the goals we set. Uh, for some cases, we can uh, focus on the feedback we get from our customers as the score of our satis customer satisfaction rate or the amount of revenue we get, or maybe the possible savings in our customer service or for any project we have, um, using the actions and changes we make in our systems. Um, before tell, telling you uh, what we are going to do with uh, machine learning, first let me introduce baby Billy. About 10 years ago, he was born and created by the external party Life Presence. It's a knowledge-based system which contains all the possible interactions and uh, rules based on it. Uh, it uses uh, manual written patterns, rules, heuristics, and synonyms to detect uh, what the user says and uh, have an interaction with the, with the customer. It currently handles 2 million conversations a year, and it's, it's going up, and we expect it to go up dramatically. Before we started working on this project, we took some time to understand Billy better using data analysis. 
One thing uh, to do uh, this was by letting employees rate conversations of Billy during our polish night. I built a little tool and, uh, to show and label uh, chat conversations, which you can see here. Uh, we gather both feedback based on, uh, on the sentence level, as well as feedback on the entire conversation. So after this, you get some other uh, buttons uh, at the end of the conversation. We labeled in total more than 4,000 conversations. Of those conversations, about one-third was solved. Another one-third leaves the conversation early. 18% turned out to be unsolved, and a similar amount was escalated to human agent. We also got feedback uh, on the sentence level. About 75% of the sentence was correct and was a good answer. 70% uh, was incorrect and 6% uh, was considered a repetitive answer. Yeah, we also uh, took a deeper dive into the data. Yeah. <laughs> we also took a deeper dive into the data. For example, in 52% of the conversations, there are two or more confirmation questions. And in 44% of the conversations, there is one or more incomprehension answer. It's like, I don't know what you mean. Uh, that's what Billy says. To understand the complexity of the conversations, we did also a clustering analysis based on the answers from Billy. What you see here in this graph is the, uh, the answers clustered based on similarity, grouped by the order they appear in the conversation. So lower means they uh, end up further in the conversation. Uh, also, we visualize them to understand how the conversation ex uh, exactly flows. Uh, this interactive diagram shows how often uh, the next answers occur after the previous. So this, this one uh, starts at the start, but you can also click on the next answer to see what kind of answers occur next. Um, so why do we want to improve Billy? Um, an automated chat solution has a lot of benefits, both for us and for the customer. It's av available 24-7 and there's no delay. They are also the cheapest solution available. Escalating to live chat is also the most natural one and is a very efficient ch channel. By solving the most frequent problems, an agent can focus on the most complex cases. And finally, by integrating it, we can more decisions ourselves. As a first product, uh, we built a machine learning model to recognize what the users, user want based on this input. Uh, we, we give that as a suggestion to the external party. Uh, furthermore, we are working also uh, on predicting the intents of the customer. So not only recognizing based on what he says, but also based on context, predicting uh, what the customer wants. Uh, this product we will uh, A-B test soon, where we will measure impact on uh, important KPIs. Uh, and we are live since uh, this Monday. Uh, this means our system is handling around one sentence a second, uh, which is around 43,000 uh, sentences a day. Uh, this system is also more than fast enough. It handles responses in around 10 milliseconds, which is uh, more than fast enough for a, a response to a human. So how does this system work? Well, we trained a model using supervised learning to predict the probability of a sentence belonging to a certain label. That means we need a data set like this um, of input sentences and labels. We then trained a few models on them and selected the best performing one. 
So we selected like an LSTM and a convolutional neural network or a bag of words neural network, and we selected the one that performed the best on a uh, test set. This system, uh, we integrated it into a service we, called, uh, we call Comprehender. Uh, before I tell you a bit about neural networks, I want to be clear. Uh, neural networks are not in any way uh, like a human brain. But it's more like this. Uh, it's a learnable function where a part of it consists of trainable parameters. Uh, parameters that you can train uh, based on your data. The central idea of neural networks is that it's not just one uh, mapping, but it consists of a lot of smaller fu uh, linear functions, uh, nonlinear uh, functions, um, which contain the intermediate uh, representations of your data and get more abstract while going uh, in this direction. So the circle here is uh, composition, and it goes from the right uh, to the left. Um, this is how, uh, well, the most basic neural networks uh, work. Uh, there, in the middle, that's a uh, W, that's the weight matrix, that is uh, multiplied with, with the X term, which is your input, and then, later on, a bias term is added. Uh, the activation function G makes uh, the mapping non-linear, uh, which is important if you want uh, to learn non-linear um, mappings between data and your predictions. Convolutional neural networks are similar, but the weights are shared across space, and they are only connected uh, locally. For images, a, a 2D convolutional neural network is often used, but for text, audio, and time series, we can use one-dimensional convolutions. Also, for neural networks, there are some recent successful te techniques. Also, Pluck uh, told you about one, which is uh, transfer learning. But also, res residual connections, attention, are some techniques that uh, are really popular to improve uh, the accuracy of uh, models. Um, this is how a convolutional neural network can be visualized for text. First, we transform some um, uh, input characters to a, a matrix. Uh, we can uh, discretize it to, uh, to ones and zeros, or even learn, learn the mapping from uh, characters to uh, some continuous um, representation. Uh, the convolutional uh, layers in between and the pooling layers, um, they extract uh, features out of the text based on the previous layers. And finally, there will be some layer that gives uh, the predictions. Um, next uh, to uh, intent recognition, which I talked about, we also in, uh, experimented a bit with context-based predictions. So we gather a set of context variables to predict the uh, question of the customer even when only uh, using a relatively limited set of variables, like time since last order, um, we get with a, a gradient boosting model, model a performance of uh, 29.0 top one accuracy, compared to a 23.6 uh, baseline top one accuracy that always takes the most uh, frequently occurring answer. Uh, and we expect we can do much better when using and adding uh, much, more, much more relevant uh, data. Um, yes, customer service 2.0. We have many more ideas in mind. We want to design it in a rather modular way, where each component could be used independently to improve multiple processes. For example, we can assist the agent better using automated suggestions. We can route the customer also to the best agent directly with auto routing. Furthermore, we can integrate it more uh, into the processes of Bol.com by handling more domains. 
Um, we will be starting soon on integrating conversational systems more into Bold.com with the contact bot. Uh, the contact bot will help customers to get contact info for a sp specific topic and a product. It also allows us to prioritize options for contacting agents or s sellers, which can give a service to customers themselves. The system will also understand user input like free text or speech, in which case it will classify or apply entity recognition to extract uh, information from the user. Um, a next project we are uh, working on is text and trend analytics. By extracting trends from text, we can automatically discover important issues uh, like problems with products, um, etc. These insights we can give in real time to sellers, agents, or maybe even IT teams. Uh, auto routing. Auto routing will help us uh, to uh, get the best possible agent for the customer based on historical data. Historical data can be uh, handling time, agent info, or uh, other KPIs that are important for us. Um, before I um, do the summary, let me show you. So this is the, um, can I show this one? I think I have to, uh, yes. So this is our uh, Comprehender service. It uh, predicts or recognizes uh, uh, the intents of the customer. So based on uh, input centers, you can uh, add here and you can also add how many uh, predictions it will give. Uh, so that's default uh, three. It will uh, give you the most uh, likely uh, intents um, based on your input centers. So you can say, for example, uh, it, it will um, uh, For example, if you want to return something, it's detected that uh, it's about returning an article. And that's, that's, uh, that is a thing we directly give uh, to our uh, external partners. So, uh, in summary, uh, we let me close this one. Uh, we uh, want to make uh, both the customer service and Ball.com better using AI and machine learning techniques based on data. Uh, we presented also a way of working uh, with, with data in a development team. Uh, we showed also some results of an analysis and the first developments of uh, our AI systems. Uh, finally, we presented a modular approach for the future of customer service, where machine learning and AI can play a large role. Thank you for listening to my talk. If there are any questions, I would be happy to uh, answer them. Are there any questions? Pizza. I already saw one up here. Hmm? I already saw a question up yes. here. Um, if we were to start selling to a different country as well, how would, would, would this still work if we add more languages here? I think uh, if you're um, exposing a chat uh, agent to different languages, then of course you need uh, to build up some data. But once they will uh, be interacting with the system, you can learn from the data and, and begin to iterate and uh, retrain models and 
improve your system based on uh, the data you then have. Maybe uh, to add to that, how does it handle Dutch versus Flemish? Um, I think because uh, the data itself also uh, contains Flemish uh, sentences, uh, it will handle those uh, pr probably perfectly well. Yes. Other questions from the room? I think there's one way up there. This is going to be uh, interesting. Go plug. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Nice throw. Almost there. A little <laughs> more. Yep. Uh, I was wondering, are there also ideas about re recording the conversations with the, which the real agents have and to burn them to text to get even more data? Yes, indeed. That's uh, also uh, the idea we have and also a thing we are uh, going to work on is to uh, uh, record uh, uh, both agent uh, voice and uh, customer voice and being able to an both analyze it and also take actions based on this data. So based on what someone could say during a, uh, during a phone uh, conversation, we could, uh, for example, route, route him to the uh, uh, correct agent, to the best agent possible. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions from the room? The light's very bright, but I don't... Yep, one over here. <laughs> so, how much of the uh, machine learning is um, the code you've written yourself, and how much is it using external libraries and stuff? Um, I, I think in almost... Uh, the, the best thing to do is use as much uh, libraries you can use for a particular, a particular uh, pro a project. Um, so for example, we use uh, TensorFlow and Kirex uh, for uh, training this model. But you have to uh, pre-process and uh, extract features uh, yourself. Uh, so that's the thing you have to do, but you can use uh, libraries like TensorFlow and Keras, whatever you uh, like for training models. Was, uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. Think you had a uh, no? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from the room? Mm, I don't think so, and otherwise shout now. Oh, okay. Um, how does it work with spelling errors? Yeah, I, uh, because it's, uh, it's based on characters, so it's a character-based model. Um, and people make a lot of uh, typos also within the training data. So uh, for uh, getting a high score on our validation and test set, we also have to uh, train uh, a really good model that also takes care of uh, typos and uh, spelling uh, mistakes, yes. So I think that uh, that handles it uh, pretty good, yes. Good. Um, thank you, Daniel. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. One-handed. Okay, we're going to switch rooms again. Um, I think next one's starting at 10 to 2. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs>